Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Forgiven Gaming YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going over Elden Ring and specifically a little bit of background uh, for new players that are getting into Elden Ring. Maybe uh, you're new to the FromSoft games. And then we're going to be going into how to cheese the first boss. If you want the first boss and you want the rewards from him, then uh, use this method and it's almost guaranteed that you're going to get it. Um, with that being said, I'm going to put a timestamp up on screen right now. So if you're just looking for the boss fight, go ahead and skip to this area. If you want a little bit of background information, then go ahead and stay. Um, but for this boss fight, we are actually going to want to pick a character that has a bow. There are two characters in character selection that have a bow. That being the bandit who has a short bow and the samurai that has a long bow. We're going to go ahead and pick the samurai. Uh, he has a long bow and he has um, 20 standard arrows and 10 fire arrows that he has. Um, which do the fire arrows obviously do increase damage. We're going to pick the Crimson Amber Medallion. This is just going to give us a little bit of, let's just read the description off. A medallion inlaid with Crimson Amber increases maximum hit points. This may help, especially if you're a new character. Uh, a couple things about this game. First off, uh, we're going to notice in the top left hand side of the screen, whenever we get in here, that we have three bars, a red, a blue, and a green one. Green is going to be your stamina. Stamina does not deplete outside of combat, even if you're sprinting, rolling, jumping, whatever. Um, but inside combat, everything is going to deplete your stamina. It's a very resource management type of game. Um, you So if you're uh, swinging, if you're attacking with your weapon, that's going to take stamina. Jumping, I don't think jumping does. But rolling, dodging, backstepping, uh, swinging your weapon, firing your bow, so on and so forth, that's all going to take damage in combat. Or not uh, take damage, it's going to take stamina while you're in combat. Uh, focus points, these are going to be drained by using sorceries or incantations. Uh, these used to be called miracles back in uh, Dark Souls. Um, or doing your skill. So the skill with the bow is actually going to be called a mighty shot. And I'll put the description up on screen right now. Well, I have a little bit of black there on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, it does cost six focus points. And if we uh, look at our character, we can tell that we have... Um, Where's our focus points? We have 71. So we can actually do this uh, 12 times. And the math doesn't really check out because 12 times 6 is 72, and we only have 71. If you have one focus point remaining, you can still do whatever um, spell, incantation, uh, ability, skill uh, that you are going to do, uh, even if you just have one focus point. So definitely worth doing. Uh, with your bow like we have it in our left hand but if we do our right bumper or our right trigger which is going to be our light and heavy attacks respectively we still just punch what you have to do is you have to two hand the weapon that's in your left uh or the you have to two hand the, the bow and it's going to be on our left hand side so we're going to hold y and press our left bumper that's going to two hand the weapon that's in our left hand uh in our left hand uh if you have a weapon in your right hand it's going to be the opposite it's going to be um hold y press right bumper like I said, we do have 20 of the standard arrows and 10 of the fire arrows. In order to do your skill, you need to press uh, LT. Your character will take this stance, and then whenever you press RT or RB, it is going to, uh, you, you will do the skill. Obviously, like I said, mighty blow. And one, thing I, one other thing that I wanted to mention is whatever, this is going to be your inventory setup. You can have three armaments in your right hand, three armaments in your left hand. Uh, Two arrows equipped and then two bolts equipped, along with some armor and then some cool cloth abilities. Uh, what we're looking for in this fight is our arrows. Arrows one are always going to be your right bumper, and arrows two are always going to be your right trigger. So, for the boss fight, we are going to be using the Mighty Blow, um, which is obviously, like we've been talking about, the ability of the Longbow. And I want to put a couple damages up here on the left hand side of the screen right now, again, while we have a uh, black background. This is going to be uh, if you just hit it in the body, if you hit it in the head. Um, if you hit its shield, I want to say it's like three damage or something like that. It's really not worth doing. And then there's going to be two attacks that are worth punishing. Um, one of them we will punish with the mighty blow, and then one of them we will uh, punish with just a quick light attack. Um, so the the two that we have are going to be the standard four hit pattern. It's it's kind of eight hits, but it's four uh, four moves essentially. Um, and then the one that we're going to attack with the quick attack, I can call it the Furious Crab. And that will make more sense as we get into it. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. 
It is worth noting that headshots do stagger the opponent, and the fourth move in his chain has a very limited range, but you can still get hit. So that was a body shot. You can headshot him on the opening. Uh, so there's one, two, three, and he stopped. If his arm goes back on that combo right there, that's whenever you want to pull up your mighty blow. And I'll show you more here in a second. That's his standard four hit combo kind of thing. You can punish additional moves here, but the, for the sake of this guy and for the sake of making it easy, uh, we're looking for just this move right here. This is his attack chain. Two, three. His arm goes back for the fourth attack, and we can go. And you can see, like, really limited range on Two, three. Okay, so we went way late here. Uh, the reason for that, and we actually got lucky because we got a shield on his face. Uh, the reason that we went way late is because um, I think I was rolling. I, I forget. I'd have to go back. All right, right here. Move this is the furious crab move I was talking about. So I recommend just doing a light attack, holding your arrow back, and then whenever he stops, like just hold RB. Whenever he stops, release it. Oh, that's what I was going to say. We got really lucky because you can see that the arrow is actually sticking out of his shield. Um, so we actually, not only did he not attack us, even though we were really late on our off, um, but the game gave us full credit for hitting him rather than hitting the shield. Which was very nice. I apologize if the audio is cutting out. I'm streaming through my Xbox onto my computer. It's uh, pretty, just, st it's not a gaming PC, so. Three, his arm goes back to the fourth, and we won. We've not been getting lucky with headshots. Headshots are a little bit difficult to pull off. I mean, you can press your uh, left bumper in order to aim, but that would be very difficult to do in this situation. Two, three, and his arm goes back, and we go. There's a headshot. Right here, you want to be very careful whenever he takes this duelist stance because he has these very rapid moves. He also has a spinning move, uh, which is a little bit easier to avoid, in my opinion. All right, so here we go. We're going to go in. Another headshot. We have two fire arrows left. We want to make sure that we're uh, paying attention to how many arrows we have left, because even if you have none and you try and do that move, your character will reach back uh, and try and grab something. And it takes a little bit of time to really be exposed. He didn't do his fourth, so we didn't punish. You can punish with a uh, light attack if you want to there. Very, very safe. You can also punish this with a light attack. Uh, but I'm going to really only recommend that you do that you attack Crazy Crab and the four hit combo. For the purpose of the cheats. This crazy crab. Your fight can be faster or slower depending on RNG. Like right there, he keeps stopping at the three hit combo rather than going for the full four hit. Bonus. Is the four hit in order to oh wow he blocked it okay uh in order to reliably get that move to come out you want to stay at about a mid close range he does have this move where he buffs up his weapons he adds holy damage to them uh it doesn't really affect it too much because you're still basically a two hit kill to this guy two three and he stopped at three he's making this fight take a lot longer and realistically, so am I by not punishing a lot of people. Yeah. Two, three, and he goes for the fourth. He will attack Crazy Crab. So we are out of fire arrows now. I, I was going to try and follow up with a fire arrow, but... Uh, now that I see it, I see that's a bad idea. 
All right, we're gonna punish crazy crab. That move, that scream, he only does if you're like very close to him. Uh, basically, melee combatants really have to worry about that. Though. And it does do damage behind it. Even though it's a scream that's directed forward, it does like uh, AOE around him as well. Uh, very much close. I think it may be a uh, not intended mechanic. We're going to go ahead and punish this because we can. You want to be very careful on this side of the arena because it falls off onto the cliff, and obviously, if you fall off the cliff, you die. It is important to note, even with his health this low, we don't want to get greedy. Um, all right, here we go. End fight right here. But like I was saying, with his health low, you don't want to get greedy. That's one of the easiest things to do in this game. Uh, or in any FromSoft game, is whenever you, like, you establish an attack pattern and you establish a punish pattern, um, and then your enemy gets low enough that you get a little greedy and you go for it. And that mm, almost invariably will result in your death. Uh, whenever It'll take what's almost a guaranteed win into a guaranteed death. So, for beating this character, we actually got two things. We got the ornamental straight sword. The description reads, a slender straight sword patterned after an antique ornament. Superior swordsmen prefer to wield one in each hand. After falling from grace, the dregs of the golden lineage sought power and purpose in the past. It does have the unique skill golden tempering, which you saw the boss do, which crosses the two swords to grant their attack holy essence. While in effect, strong attacks perf uh, perform a dual wielding combo attack. And the other thing that we got was the Golden Beast Crest Shield. The description reads, Shield of dull gold with a beast engraved as its crest, lighter than most great shields and subsequently easier to wield. The beast depicted is Sirosh, Age Counselor who guides the golden lineage. It does have no skill. So we quickly re-equipped re ourselves back into the samurai outfit, and now we're going to go get the rewards that you get after beating this boss. So, you beat the boss, you come down here to this grave, and you... We don't want to read the message, we want to press Y to acquire materials. These are going to be the mass scent butterflies. Uh, these are going to be an exceedingly rare crafting component, and I want to say there's really nothing else here. And then you'll head out over here, you'll see another set of butterflies, and you'll go for them, and you'll fall down. This is actually going to be an Nintendo mechanic. Again, you're supposed to die at the very beginning of this game in order for the cutscene to, uh, to go as it's supposed to. Overall thoughts on this boss. Uh, I do think it's a really good introductory boss uh, to introduce the concept of uh, death being a way to advance into the game. Uh, as far as difficulty goes, for the cheese mechanic or the cheese method, I would recommend. I would say that uh, we put it about a three out of ten. It's very easy to replicate. A uh, case could be made even for like a one out of ten or a two out of ten. Uh, the fight duration did take us uh, six minutes and six seconds from first hit to last hit. And then overall tips that I want to give for this boss uh, is going to be take your time. Um, you know, look for those openings. Uh, don't get greedy. Whenever it's low health, don't let it because it can still two tap you, even if it's low health. Uh, and then this is the one boss in the game where I actually uh, will say get good is uh, one of the mechanic one of the things that you have to do for this fight because uh, it's so early on you can't upgrade your SS flask or your uh, your flasks um, you can't craft any kind of weapons if you're going to beat it you have to beat it uh, with your standard setup. Hope you guys did enjoy the episode. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. We are going to make more boss guides in the future. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and play us out with some music.